R2Y Resi Resi here, and I'm going to be showing you guys one of the ways I sync with Twixter today. So, to get this started, um, there's no right set, right way to sync with Twixter, right? Just a couple of things that you need to keep in mind and keep in check. Because, one, you don't want warping, two, you don't want any... Uh, any unnecessary spots where you can uh, have the frames warping and stuff like that. And if you don't know what I mean by warping in the clip, then um, I'll be showing you that as well. So you have your song, you have it inside the new composition, and then you have your own composition with the song in it. So, all right. And um, in the beginning, there will be a, uh, an example, and at the end, there will be another example. So, let's get started. I just dragged the uh, clip composition inside here, and I'm going to look for where I want to sync the uh, shot. Or sync the shot and the motion, because that's how I uh, really sync. I'm going to start there. I'm going to see how many shots you take. So, what I like to do when I'm syncing with Twixter is I like to count how many uh, shots he's taken. So I know uh, one, two, three. Four, four shots. All right. So uh, you press LL on the song to see the waveform, and that helps you a lot with syncing with the beat. All right. Uh, the song I'm using, I'll put that in the description, or I'll put a where I got it in the description. Just in case you guys want to use the song, practice with the song, sound like that. Or even just listen to the song. Uh, do what you want with the song. And the song is Work Your Body by Funk Whatever. I don't want to fuck. I'll just put that. I'll just put that in the description. Alright, so first uh just turn off the I button to hide your clip. Now you can uh, do it on every beat if you want, but I am not going to. So I'm going to set markers. Uh, if you're on a Windows, I forget how, but if you're on a Mac, it is Control A button or Control Star. So. We delete the marker. Yeah. Fuck. So. Going back to uh, finding which which spot you want to sync the, the shots and the motion to. Now there's no wrong way to do this, really. So um <clears throat> you can um import your gun sounds or you can wait till after you want to import your gun sound, but eventually you you will have to import your gun sound, so I just do it now. Uh so I
Yeah, fucking bulls. Fuck. So, I'm gonna put the uh, first shot right there. Or, uh, let's see. First shot there. <laughs> Just knowing where I I'm going to put the uh, the sinks helps a lot, and the, having the right song. Helps a lot too. Because sometimes the song is a lot harder than what it is. Alright, so I'm just gonna speed this up real quick. So, yeah. So, I'm back. And, um,. I forgot to uh, uh, hit the play button again, so uh, I was talking to myself like a fucking retard. But uh, yeah, so um, what I did was um, I made the markers where I wanted what I, where I wanted to uh, sync motions or sync effects or stuff like that, which is what markers is helpful to do, right? And I have I just copy and pasted the gunshots, right? And I really, I really didn't think that you guys needed to hear that because it's not hard to press con Control D or Command D over and over again for different shots and moving them. That's it's not hard. You can do that. I, I'm sure you all can do that. If, if you can't do that, then you have no nibbles and you have a fat neck. All right. So. I have the, um, so I started singing the shot like a fucking retard didn't record. So I have this shot synced up, and um, I'll explain how I, how I did that, and I'll start uh, syncing more things and explain on the way. So I slowed it down, right? And um, it's basically the 100 keyframe, right, is where. The speed is at 100, which is at normal, right? So that keyframe I put at the very beginning or near the beginning, right? And I moved, I trimmed and moved the clip over to where I wanted it to start. If that's, um, if that's understandable. So I basically cut it and moved it and deleted the stuff that I didn't want. That's... That thing thing that as simple as I can put it, right? And um, I slowed it down so it over here it's at like forty nine, but like right here it's at fifty. So uh, yeah, I slowed it down, right? And it is moving slowly and slowly, and bam, right? And um. Uh, the shot is right here, right? And I moved over, I moved back five frames, right? One, two, three, four, five, right? You can do it for five, you can do it for ten. It's a matter of your opinion and what you want to do. And as you can see, there's warping right there, right? That, um, that won't be seen because uh, I will add a real smart motion blur, RSMB, and I have my own, well, I have settings that I like to use, right? And uh, that goes to show you that. So I'm going to show you my uh, Twixter settings. So you guys get a chance to, to know that. But, but um, these aren't really mine. I did not make them. I did not own them. Um, Myth Doom or Doom. He's not in Myth anymore. Not in Fractal anymore. But um, he synced with Twixter. And this, this, these are the settings that he likes to use. So yeah. I put the frame rate to 59.940. Because that... uh. That is the frame rate of the clip. 
and um, the image prep was at none and as you can see it did that that is ugly so you would uh, change that to contrast slash edge enhance so that doesn't happen um, this was that blend um, but I put it to motion weighted blend oh, shit. and this was at I think inverse and I put it to inverse smart edge and then at the bottom you can see the uh, the difference uh, I put the main BG layer settings to sensitive, the sensitivity to 100 that's it that's all I changed so yeah and then yeah so I started sinking a little bit and that's what this is what uh, I came up with so um one way to make warping not easy to, to be seen is if you add well first of all if you need to know when to when to slow things down and everything so um See the stuff, stuff like that. You're gonna scale it up, so you won't be able to see much of that. So that this right here is an excellent place to twister. And um, so, what you can do is if there's a small gap between shots, right? You slow it down, and then you speed it up only a tiny bit. So. As you can see, it's five. I don't like the that's the lowest amount I use. I don't ever use zero or one or two. I don't use them because there's like almost no motion. But with five, with the speed at five, you can see the motion somewhat, and it makes tiny a tiny bit of a difference. And I tend I put um five and uh, yeah, and then this here's the next marker that I wanted to sync the motion to. Right, it's kind of like using velocity with uh, Vegas, but using it with Twixter in a way. So you see, it's at 300, but I move back five keyframes so that it's at uh yeah. So I would one, two, three, four, five. Oh shit, it's not at five. Let me change that. And change that to 320. Compensate for that. Yeah. Five keyframes before blah blah blah, and I always move five keyframes back. Always. All right, and. As you can see, these two motions right here, they don't have all these two key um, markers don't have uh, keyframes right next to them because I didn't. I would rather add an effect right here or something to make it interesting, or that's when you add an effect, something like that. But I, I sync first and I map out where I want to add effects, stuff like that. I don't add effects just as I'm syncing. And the last shot is uh, quite further, quite far away. So I'm gonna sync these two motions over here. One, two, three, four, five. Put that to like 90 or 100. That's uh, your choice, and it's kind of far away. So I'm going to uh, change this to about 500 or 600 seeing how fast or how much he moves and moving this over quite a bit so that it, he moves pretty fast and doing the same exact thing for the uh, next marker don't care One, two, three, four, five. and uh, changing this to about 90 again so he keeps moving and changing it to 600 and again a lot of editing is trial and error so ah perfect 
and I cannot tell you um where to set the ending marker or ending keyframe I should say for uh, after you uh, jump the beat because it's a matter of personal preference you're not going to get that without trying something or fixing it stuff like that I'm probably going to go back into fixing this maybe not maybe it really does depend Seven hundred or eight hundred. See, I'm going to be changing these markers over here. So about seven fifty, and this to seven fifty two. And as you can see, it's uh, for this one, it, it's too fast. So, I'm going to slow it down, make it at like uh, 400, 200. I kind of want to make it kind of fast, so I'm going to put this to 600 and see what that does to this one. And editing, and editing is, as I said, trial and error, so you're not going to probably get it the first try with the correct settings that you like so gotta try things switch things out All right, that's the only way you're gonna get used to it you gotta practice with it and this is the last shot that O and then yeah. I put I have my own real smart motion blur settings that I like. So yeah. And uh yeah, that's how you would uh sync with Twixter. But um what you also want to do is scale it up. This is all about what you like. If I'm editing an episode, I'm not gonna scale it over one fifteen. I just say because uh, you can barely see the feed like that. I mean, like you can if if you want. I mean, I personally use one between one o five or between one o three and one eleven. Really, those are the only settings I like. And if I'm doing no CE or mini edit, I would probably put it to one fourteen or one thirteen, something like that. Because you really don't want to see the the feed and mini edits because it's about what you do in the edit. All right, I'm gonna put this to about uh, 107, and I'll just do a sample of what I do for pan cropping. Just yeah. So, what I like to do is keep it moving, I should say. So, what I did, what I just did was I press S for scale, right? I put the uh, the highest marker right here, which is 115, all the way over here. I'm probably, I'm probably going to change that to 113, right? And then it goes down, goes down, goes down, right? And I pressed, I pressed and held shift, right? And I uh, pressed the next frame on the preview section, tab, whatever you want to call it. And it moved over 10 keyframes. Instead of clicking next 10 times, that's a lot easier. And uh, I'm probably going to change this to 115. And I just copied and pasted it over here too. Just change that to one fifteen. And I'm gonna copy and paste it again over here. And every time there's a a big jump, I'm going to add those, add that pan and cropping because 
you don't just want to have it scaling up and down like fucking retarded shit. Like, that looks disgusting. Like, I can honestly say that. That really does look disgusting. You kind of want to have it slowly moving and stuff like that. So, yeah. Next, I'm going to do is I'm going to easy use this. Uh, keep on assistant. Easy use. F9, the easy use. But I can't press F9 right now because it's going to fucking fuck up. So, yeah. That is how I uh, sync with Twixter. I'm actually going to change this to 570. Sometimes when you easy as shit, it fucks up. Oh, well, that one didn't fuck up. Alright, that one's fine. That one's not fine. And trial and error. Right. So yeah, guys. Um, most of editing is trial and error, and it's something that you just get used to. Like things that you, yeah, I want to put them like that. And I'm just gonna put some CC I made like yesterday on some shit. Uh, 